Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing well. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs, which are relevant for RBI grade B and SEBI grade A exam. Today, we're going to talk about a very important topic that is monetary policy committee meeting. So recently, monetary policy committee meeting was held for the month of February and on 8th February, the meeting was concluded and the decision were made public. So monetary policy committee meeting may there was monetary policy statement and a statement on developmental and policy regulation. Let's talk about this, what has been recommendation or what has been highlights of the monetary policy committee meeting. Usse pehle we have to understand what is this monetary policy committee. Yes, already I hope sabko pata hi hoga because you must have studied it especially in your static section. But let's just recapitulate that. So earlier what used to happen, before 2016 what used to happen was RBI was the sole authority responsible for bringing monetary policy changes. Okay, so RBI alone used to bring monetary policy changes. But the government wanted to have congruence between the government and the RBI. So government wanted to have a share in the monetary policy committee and for better transmission of the monetary policy system. So it was decided in 2016 that a monetary policy committee will be under which there will be members from both the RBI and the government. So in 2016, our MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, was formed as a statutory body and the RBI Act was amended to formulate this MPC further which will, be, which will formulate the monetary policy in India. So is MPC, mein, the Monetary Policy Committee, its composition kya thi? It has six members. It currently also has six members. Three members from the RBI and the rest three members are appointed by the central government. So these represent the central government. Thus, we have representation of both the RBI and the government in the Monetary Policy Committee. So the members include RBI Governor, the Deputy Governor of RBI, another member of the RBI which is nominated by the Central Board of Directors of RBI and three other members which were appointed by the Central Government of India. This is the uh, composition of Monetary Policy Committee. Now, what Monetary Policy Committee karti kya hai? What is the function? The function is to bring price stability in the economy, to control inflation in the economy by keeping and also keeping in mind the growth of the economy. So, inflation, price stability, uh, economy may maintain karna and keeping in mind the growth in the economy. So, the members, uh, let's see, the members of uh, the MPC in ka office kitne time ke liye hota hai? They hold an office for a period of four years and they are not appointed, they are not eligible for reappointment. Also, the quorum for the MPC is four members. The MPC is required to meet at least four times in a year. The reason why we are discussing this was because recently, uh, I think previous year only, there was a question in phase two about monetary policy committee. That's why it's very important. The decision hai, the MPC takes decision based on majority vote. Okay. Those of those who are present and voting. And in case there is a tie, what will happen in case there is a tie? The RBI governor will have the final decision. So the RBI governor will have a second vote or a casting vote that will break this tie. And jo bhi decision hoga by this monetary policy committee, that will be binding on the RBI. Ye humne padhi about monetary policy committee. Now monetary policy committee in 2016 had a target for inflation. So ek inflation target rakha gaya tha. Firstly, how do we map this inflation? This was also discussed beforehand. Consumer price index. The CPI inflation ko map karti hai RBI. So the target inflation was 4%. This was the medium term target. And a band was kept of 4 plus minus 2%. This gives 2 to 6%. Iske beech mein hi rehni chahiye. The inflation is supposed to be maintained between 2 to 6%. So this was the band that was kept for consumer price index inflation. Okay, so for in 2016, it was decided that for five years, this band is to be maintained and it was further extended for next five years. So the tolerance is four uh, plus minus two percent. That is the tolerance band for inflation. Talking about repo rate, ab repo rate kya hota hai? I think sabko pata hi hoga. Repo rate se hi monetary policy tightening or monetary policy accommodation hoti hai. So repo rate is nothing but an interest rate at which RBI injects liquidity in the economy. Okay, RBI provides liquidity to banks against collateral. So if a bank has collateral and is in need of money, they give collateral 
to RBI and RBI further gives uh, gives liquidity to these banks, which banks further use for lending in the economy, thus creating money supply. So, we have monetary policy statement ka background. Samaj liya. Now, what will happen if repo rate is increased? So, if this repo rate increases, the borrowing from the RBI becomes expensive. Therefore, banks will borrow less from the RBI, which will reduce the credit growth in the economy. So, banks will borrow less, karenge, they will have less money to give credit to. So, credit to the household sector and to other sectors in the economy will be reduced. Thus, the money supply in the economy will decrease. Okay. So, when increase hota hai repo rate, mein, money supply decrease. Hoti hai. And if there is a decrease in the repo rate, money supply increases. This is very important. It can be asked in phase 1 exam. Okay. Up this time, the Monetary Policy Committee, February uh, 8th, ko jo recommendations aai hai. Let's discuss that. There was an increase in the monetary policy, uh, the repo rate, the policy repo rate under the liquidity adjustment framework. This was by 25 basis point. So the repo rate increased by 25 basis point this time, coming to 6.5% with immediate effect. So the repo rate currently stands at 6.5%. Very important data for uh, exam point of view. So the repo rate is at 6.5%. What is this? SDF and MSF. We have read this a lot. Even in our previous videos, we have discussed what is standing deposit facility and what is marginal standing facility. So the SDF, there is a liquidity corridor. The SDF and MSF forms, this SDF forms the floor rate of the liquidity corridor and this MSF forms the ceiling rate, ceiling rate of liquidity corridor. SDF was recently introduced. It just works like reverse repo rate. Reverse repo rate. So it works like reverse repo rate wherein RBI absorbs liquidity in the economy. Okay. So banks apply excess money they can park with RBI through which RBI absorbs liquidity in the economy using the SDF mechanism. Only difference between reserve reverse repo rate and SDF is that in SDF there is no collateral involved. We have both bar discussed. So the SDF uh, falls the floor rate in this LAF corridor liquidity adjustment facility corridor okay repo rate is in the middle in the difference is 25 basis point and in the difference is 25 basis point the msf forms the ceiling rate and the sdf forms the flow rate i hope this is clear again very important from exam point of view now is bar ki monetary policy committee ki meeting jo hui thi, what was the fo uh, focus of that what is the focus of monetary policy statement this time the focus was on calibrated withdrawal the focus remained on withdrawal of accommodation so up until uh, last year in initial period february 2022 tak thi, the focus was on accommodative stance right so the focus was on reducing um, rates and thus injecting liquidity in the economy but after this there was increase in inflation in the economy thus the rbi since last five six times have maintained withdrawal stands. So for the sixth time this time RBI increased the repo rate this time by 25 basis point. Why? Because there was a hike in inflation especially inflation was more than the 2 to 6 percent band. Okay. Now ab dekhte hai ki abhi ki inflation kya hui hai. First let's look at what are the assessments made uh, especially in this statement monetary policy statements. So uh, this committee talked about the statement talked about global economy. Global economy mein demand kya rahi hai? See, we all know uh, there have been global supply chain bottlenecks uh, because of geopolitical hostilities, because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Global supply chain disruptions hui hai. And major countries have focused on monetary tightening. So even of, uh, in spite of monetary tightening, in spite of geopolitical hostilities, the growth has improved. Jo pehle growth expected thi because of the Russia-Ukraine war, because of global supply chain disruptions, usme thoda sa ease aya hai. Yet, it is known that global growth this year will decline. It is expected to decelerate during 2023. These are the two main reasons given for that. So, even though the growth has improved from earlier phase, but abhi bhi it is known that the global growth rate will decline. Talking about domestic economy, global economy dekh liya, domestic economy ke baare mein statement ni kya baat kari hai. The first advance estimate, which is given by NSO, the National Statistical Organization, they have predicted GDP 
GDP as per the first advance estimate given by the NSO National Statistical Office is 7%. The 7% GDP growth will be in the year 2023, financial year ending 2023. The GDP growth will be 7%. Okay, talking about purchasing managers index. What is this purchasing managers index? It is nothing but an economic indicator of manufacturing as well as service sector. But it only includes private sector. So manufacturing and service may private sector may kya improvement hai hai? What has been the growth? Have the policies been followed? Production kaisi hui hai? Demand kaisi hui hai? All these are maps in purchase uh, purchasing managers index, especially for manufacturing and service sector, but only in the private sector, the private sector, not the public sector. So this is purchasing manager index and it has improved in the month of January. There has been an expansion. Talking about domestic demand, domestic demand has also increased. It has been sustained by strong discretionary spending. Merchandise exports itne bade nahi hai. Why? Because global demand nahi badi hai. So there has been an increase in domestic demand, but there has not been an increase in the uh, global demand, right? So the merchandise exports, on the other hand, contracted in December because of weak global demand. This was also talked about in this monetary policy statement. Talking about CPI, now inflation ki baat hum kar rahe hai. Jab monetary policy statement nikalti hai, they target inflation this we have discussed. So monetary policy mein repo rate increase hua hai. But what has been the inflation? So inflation in the month of December has been 5.7%, which is marginally below the 4 plus minus 2 ka band. It is marginally below the 4 plus minus 2 band. It is 5.7% in the month of December 2022. In November, it was 5.9%. And why has this inflation decreased? Agar aap dekhenge, December mein inflation decrease hui hai. One of the main reasons is seen as double digit deflation in vegetable prices. Double digit deflation in vegetable prices. So the vegetable prices have fallen consecutively for two times. Okay, that is double digit deflation in the vegetable prices. Just ki wajah se inflation mein thoda sa ease aya hai. Talking about core CPI. What is core CPI? When you exclude the volatile food and fuel items from CPI, from consumer price index, when you exclude the food and fuel items because these are volatile, this gives us core CPI. The core CPI has been 6.1% in December. This is one of the reasons because the core CPI has been sticky. Because of stickiness in inflation, it has still been above the four, uh, the 2 to 6% ba band that is one of the reasons ki is bhari bhi withdrawal of accommodative stance hua hai. There has been monetary policy tightening even this time. Even if the inflation is 5.7%, that is between the mark, uh, between the band of 2 to 6%, tab bhi uh, jo hai is bhar monetary policy tightening hui hai instead of an ease. Why? Because one of the reasons is core inflation, the core CPI has have been 6.1%. Okay, so overall liquidity in the economy is in the surplus, mein hai, which is not a bad thing. Now, average daily absorption, this is not an important data from exam point of view, but just an overall look. So, this was one of the questions that was asked in the interview of RBI. So, ye pooch sakte hai, if especially if recently koi interview ho, to pooch sakte hai. What is the liquidity situation in the economy? What is RBI do, doing towards that? Aise questions aa sakte hai. So, we just have to be aware of them. This is not going to come in your exam. So, the average daily absorption under the LAF was 1.6 lakh crore, which increased from 1.4 lakh crore previously. So December, January in two months, mein, the average absorption of liquidity has been 1.6 lakh crore and uh, the average absorption has been 1.4 lakh crore. So overall liquidity surplus, mein thi, that is why the average absorption rate is given. This is done by the LAF corridor. Let's understand GDP, kya rahi hai, bar, what has been the GDP protection? Especially for, uh, yes, so for this period, it has been 7%. We have already discussed as per the um, first advance estimate given by NSO. Talking about GDP of the next year, it is expected to be at 6.4%. Then, now monetary policy statement mein bas itna hi tha. We discussed what is repo rate, SDF, uh, what is this and is mein kya change aya hai. Talking about the statement of developmental and regulatory policies. So RBI, MPC ki jo committees hoti hai, jo meetings hoti hai, unme do policies, do statements nikalti hai. First is the monetary policy statement and the second is the statement on developmental and regulatory policies. 
लेट्स डिस्कस इसमें क्या बातें हुई हैं सो दीज स्टेटमेंट सेट्स आउट वेरियस डेवलपमेंटल एंड रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसी मेजर्स दैट वी आर बी आई विल टेक गोइंग फॉरवर्ड रिलेटेड टू फाइनेंशियल मार्केट रेगुलेशन पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट एंड करेंसी मैनेजमेंट लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट डिस्कशन दैट वॉज दैट टुक प्लेस वॉज इट वॉज अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ लेंडिंग एंड बोरोइंग ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज तो अभी तक आपने सुना होगा कि गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज को कोलेटरल रख के लेंडिंग एंड बोरोइंग होती है राइट देन गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज की ट्रेडिंग भी होती है परचेज एंड सेल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज तो ये दोनों होते हैं नाउ दे विल बी लेंडिंग एंड बोरोइंग ऑफ गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज सपोज इफ एनी वन हैज एक्सेस गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एंड देर इज अ बैंक विच करेंटली डिज नॉट हैव गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज विद इट but wants to maintain a crr or an slr level what will they do or slr level what will they do they will borrow government securities and anybody with excess of government securities they can lend government securities okay so ye ab introduce hoga lending and borrowing this will also take place in the bond market ab iska koi framework abhi tak nahi aaya hai but going forward ek ye framework bhi aayega so the well functioning market of securities the well functioning market for securities for lending and borrowing will add डेप्थ एंड लिक्विडिटी टू द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज राइट उसके अलावा एफिशियंट प्राइस डिस्कवरी भी होगी इसकी वजह से इसका बेनिफिट सबसे ज्यादा क्या होगा इफ एनी बडी हैज आइडल सिक्योरिटीज सो एनी बडी इट विल फेसिलिटेट फर्स्टली ये वाइडर पार्टिसिपेशन इन दी मार्केट द लेंडिंग मार्केट बाय प्रोवाइडिंग इन्वेस्टर्स एंड वेन्यू टू डिप्लॉय आइडल सिक्योरिटीज सो इफ एनी वन हैज आइडल सिक्योरिटीज दिस प्लेटफॉर्म और दिस मैकेनिज्म विल गिव दम एन वेन्यू to deploy their idle securities and also portfolio returns ko better karne ke liye enhance their portfolio returns okay there was another discussion about recovery channels on loans recovery of penal charges okay recovery of penal charges so what happens is currently the regulated entities which is banks nbfcs aifis or india financial institutes so the regulative entities are regulated entities they have their own mechanism for penal charges what are these penal charges If somebody or a borrower defaults on loans, or या फिर अगर कोई contract में uh, compliance नहीं हो रहा है, if there is non-compliance of any term of the contract, then what happens is penal charges apply होते हैं. Now the policy regarding these penal charges is approved by the board, and the regulated entities are currently eligible to have their own penalty charge penal charges policy. Okay, so the regulated entities. have operational autonomy they have the autonomy to formulate their board approved the, these policies are to be approved by the board so they have the autonomy to formulate board approved policy for levy of penal interest on advances which shall be fair and transparent so ye jo penal interest rate ka mechanism hai kya policy follow ho rahi hai this has to be firstly board approved and it should be fair and transparent this is the current mechanism अब ये पीनल इंटरेस्ट का जो फंडा है दिस पीनल इंटरेस्ट और द पीनल चार्ज व्हाट इज द पर्पस द पर्पस इज टू ब्रिंग क्रेडिट डिसिप्लिन अमंग द बोरोवर सो इफ द बोरोवर नोस दैट अ नेगेटिव चार्ज विल बी इंपोज और अ पीनल चार्ज विल बी इंपोज इन केस आई डिफॉल्ट और इन केस आई डू नॉट कंप्लाई विद एनीथिंग दैट इज इन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट तो अगर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के किसी टर्म से इफ द बोरोवर इज नॉट कंप्लाइंग then he or she will be imposed with a negative charge or a penal interest rate a penal charge so iska aim hai to bring credit discipline a sense of credit discipline that is the major aim of this penal charges this at the same time iska jo aim hai as we discuss is to bring credit discipline the aim is not to increase the revenue to so, ab jo banks hai ya regulated entities hai they cannot increase their revenue by implying these penal charges on borrowers okay they cannot ask for excess interest rate or excess charges on loans this is just to bring a sense of credit discipline among the borrowers okay so it has been decided that any penalty for delay or default in the loan or any other non compliance of material terms or conditions of the loan contract by the borrower shall be in the form of penal charges so jo bhi penalty hogi in case there is a delay or default or any non compliance on any material terms and conditions of the loan contract to wo usko pehle to penal charges bola jayega going forward ab ye reasonable or transparent manner mein uh, regulated entities imply karengi this will be okay this will be in the form of penal charges and not in the form of 
पीनल इंटरेस्ट रेट दैट वॉज एडेड टू द इंटरेस्ट रेट तो इंटरेस्ट रेट पे अभी तक ये पीनल इंटरेस्ट रेट एड हो जाता था अब ये जो पीनल चार्ज है इट विल बी सेपरेटली रिवाइड ये सेपरेटली रिवाइ होगा नॉट ऑन द इंटरेस्ट रेट बिकॉज इट शुड नॉट इंक्रीज द इंटरेस्ट रेट एंड ऑल्सो नॉट ऑन द प्रिंसिपल दिस इज एक्सप्लेन हियर फर्दर देर शेल बी नो कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ पीनल रेट वट डज दिस मीन देर शुड बी नो कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ पीनल रेट ताकि जो प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट है उसमें ये पीनल रेट एड ना करा जाए सो द रेगुलेटेड एंटिटीज शुड नॉट एड दिस पीनल चार्ज ऑन द प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल पे एड नहीं होगा दिस विल बी सेपरेटली इंप्लाइड ओके सेपरेटली लिवाइड ऑन द बॉर्वर इन केस ऑफ एनी डिफॉल्ट ओके इन केस ऑफ एनी डिटोरिएशन ऑफ क्रेडिट रिस्क अब अगर बॉर्वर एक क्रेडिट रिस्क डिटोरिएशन उसका जो क्रेडिट रिस्क है इफ इट डिटोरिएस डिटोरिएट्स तो इन केस ऑफ एनी डिटोरिएशन इन द क्रेडिट रिस्क प्रोफाइल ऑफ द बॉर्वर द रेगुलेटेड एंटिटीज आर फ्री to alter the credit risk premium so while lending what they do is the, uh, the regulated entities which are banks nbfc so while they are lending so just rate pe wo lend karte hain us rate pe ek parameter ek aur bhi hota hai what is uh, on the decision of this rate to so, kis rate pe lending hogi this decision involves one of the parameters which is credit premium what is the credit risk of the borrower uske basis pe ek credit premium apply hota hai is rate pe so the banks or the regulated entities here they can alter the credit risk premium in case there is deterioration of the credit risk profile of the defaulter i hope itna samajh aaya hoga if there is a, a deterioration in the credit risk profile of the defaulter the regulated entities are eligible to freely alter the credit risk premium this credit risk premium is one of the parameters for deciding the rate of interest okay now talking about climate risk and sustainable finance so uh, rbi recently also recognized that there is climate risk and this climate risk this climate change risk can lead to financial instability can lead to uh, risk in the financial system okay risk in the financial system so this was recognized and uske liye ek discussion paper was introduced last year in 2022 july so last year a discussion paper was introduced by rbi which will recognize that there is climate change risk and this risk can't shift can lead to financial risk okay climb uh, this shift can lead to this risk can lead to financial risk and also can uh, change the financial can in, uh, affect the financial stability of the economy okay financial instability aa sakti hai so to prepare a strategy based on global best practices on mitigating the adverse impacts of climate change this was the purpose of the discussion paper to so, ek discussion paper laya gaya tha jiske basis pe discussions were done by the rbi on the basis of these discussions it is now decided in this statement ki ab kya decide hua hai ki following guidelines leke aayega rbi so following guidelines will be brought out by rbi what are the guidelines about there will be a broad framework on green deposit acceptance of green deposit secondly disclosure framework for climate related financial risk jo financial risks hote hain banks ke banks how will they recognize these risk how will they mitigate these risk iska ek framework aayega banks will have to disclose these okay so banks will have to disclose what is their uh, climate related financial risk and how the banks will mitigate these risks गाइडेंस ऑन क्लाइमेट सिनारियो एनालिसिस एंड स्ट्रेस टेस्टिंग जो ये रिस्क है विच इज क्लाइमेट इंड्यूस रिस्क एनी रिस्क दैट इज ड्यू टू क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑन द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर उसकी टेस्टिंग कैसे होगी हाउ विल इट बी मिटिगेटेड इसका भी एक गाइडेंस आएगी बाय द आर बी आई ओके अनादर डिसीजन दैट वॉज टेकन अनादर येस अनादर डिसीजन दैट विल बी ब्रॉट आउट फर्दर एंड वॉज मैंशन इन द स्टेटमेंट वॉज अबाउट एक्सटेंडिंग यूपीआई for inbound travelers to india so jo upi facility hai ye merchant payments mein introduce hogi merchant payments ab kon karega inbound travelers to india from the g20 countries okay so the upi facility will be expanded for merchants payments p2m merchant payments person to merchant payments for inbound travelers and these inbound travelers will be from g20 countries okay so an en enhancement has recently been made to provide upi access to nris so recently nris and nros ko jinke paas ye account hai nri and nro account holders all these nris non resident indians jinke paas non resident external and non resident ordinary account hai 
they were been given the facility to use UPI, right? UPI के through transactions कर सकते हैं. All these NRIs who uh, have their international mobile numbers linked to NRI, NRE and NRO accounts. अब ये प्रपोज किया जाएगा that any inbound traveler, especially from these G20 countries, will be able to use UPI, access UPI for merchant payments, okay? While they are in the country. तो इनिशियली ये जी ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज के लिए किया जाएगा एंड देन गोइंग फॉरवर्ड ये एक्सपैंड करा जाएगा टू अदर कंट्रीज इज वेल अनदर डिस्कशन ऑन द स्टेटमेंट मैंशन इन द स्टेटमेंट वॉज अबाउट एक्सपैंडिंग द स्कोप ऑफ ट्रेड्स तो ट्रेड्स क्या होता है पहले थोड़ा वो समझ लेते हैं ट्रेड मैकेनिज्म ऑल दो इट वॉज ऑलरेडी टॉक टू यू बट लेट्स जस्ट रिकैप्चुलेट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज अ फर्म अ बिजनेस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और एन एम एस एम ई राइट विच परचेज दिस और मेक सेल मनी तो इन्होंने एक बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज बनाया वेर इन दिस बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज विल बी बिल पेबल फॉर एबीसी लिमिटेड एंड बिल रिसीवेबल फॉर एक्स वाई जी लिमिटेड अब एक्स वाई जी के बाद एक बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज आ गया एक्स वाई जी के पास दिस इज बिल रिसीवेबल फॉर एक्स वाई जी लिमिटेड वॉट विल दे डू इन केस दे नीड अर्जेंट कैश दे डू नॉट हैव कैश बट दे हैव अ बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज इन देर हैंड दे हैव अ बिल रिसीवेबल दे गो टू अ बैंक एंड दे गेट देयर बिल डिस्काउंटेड वॉट डज दट मीन टू गेट अ बिल डिस्काउंटेड सो वॉट दे डू इज जो बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज है दे गिव इट टू द and bank on a commission or a discount deta hai and gives the amount to xyz urgent cash de deta hai xyz limited ko so for example xyz had to receive 1 lakh rupees now they go to the bank they go to the bank and they get this bill discounted in need of urgent cash so what banks will do they will keep a discount give a discount and let's say give 90000 rupees to xyz limited to xyz limited ko urgently paise mil gaye बैंक्स को गोइंग फर्दर ऑन द डेट जो कि जिस डेट पे ये बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज एक्सपायर होगा बैंक्स कैन रिसीव मनी फ्रॉम दिस एबीसी लिमिटेड दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड फैक्टरिंग दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड फैक्टरिंग तो अभी इस एग्जांपल में वी अंडरस्टूड फैक्टरिंग थ्रू बैंक बट वॉट हैपन्स इज अब लेट सपोज दो तीन बैंक है जो दो तीन फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन है हु वॉन्ट्स टू एंटर इन टू दिस फैक्टरिंग प्रोसेस अब इनको फैक्टरिंग प्रोसेस में आना है सो वॉट हैपन्स इज दिस एक्स वाई जी लिमिटेड हैज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू डिसाइड कि ये किसको अपना बिल देना चाहता है इधर बैंक ए और बैंक बी बैंक सी और एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल इंटरमीडियरी एनी अदर फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूट ठीक है तो दिस नाउ डिसीजन इज ऑन एक्स वाई जी हु डू दे वॉन्ट टू गेट देयर बिल डिस्काउंटेड फ्रॉम दिस मकैनिज्म वेर इन a lot of uh, buyers or a lot of financiers this platform was created wherein all these uh, financiers can register and further this xyz limited whoever has the bill of exchange can decide ki kisko paise dene hain so this platform was the trade platform trade receivable discounting system okay so ye platform aaya tha 2014 mein trade receivable discounting system On this MSMEs could get their bill discounted. Bills of exchange could discount करा सकते थे MSMEs. Why was this done? So this was done. The objective was to facilitate financing of trade receivable of MSMEs. Initially, in the uh, trade platform, there were three entities, thi, which was further extended to four entities very recently. And they have helped many MSMEs ko over this last few years. They have helped a lot of MSMEs and generated a lot of liquidity for these MSMEs. अब अंडर द स्टेटमेंट इट वॉज अनाउंस दैट द स्कोप ऑफ दिस ट्रेड प्लेटफॉर्म विल बी एक्सपेंडेड अब इसके अंदर किस किस को इंक्लूड करा जाएगा लेट सी दैट फर्स्टली इंश्योरेंस फैसिलिटी भी प्रोवाइड करी जाएगी ऑन दिस ट्रेड प्लेटफॉर्म सो लेट सपोज लेट सपोज अ सेलर करंटली हैज अ बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज हु करंटली हैज अ बिल रिसीवेबल बट इज अनश्योर दैट दिस बायर विल गिव दम द मनी बैक वॉट दे डू इज दे कैन गेट इंश्योरेंस they can get insurance ab ek insurance company involve ho jayegi this will give insurance on this bill receivable that in case this person defaults we will pay you the money this is the job of an insurance company ab ye bills receivable jo hold karta hai that is xyz limited they will pay premium to the insurance company and the insurance company will 
the insurance company will pay back the amount in case this person defaults. Only in case this person defaults, the insurance company will be liable to pay to XYZ Limited. So, now this threats platform pe insurance sector be involved. Ho so, insurance facility will now be permitted on this threads platform. This will encouraging this will encourage financing discounting of payable and buyers irrespective of their credit ratings. Okay, because they have insurance, kara li ab, right? So, their credit rating will increase. Now, they can uh, get these bills discounted as well. At the same time, trade on these bills as well. Why? Because they have insurance. Li li. So, now their bills ki value will increase because there is an insurance on these, right? So, insurance companies will now be permitted to participate as a fourth participant on trades. So, abhi currently, how many participants are MSME, MSME sellers, the buyers who will pay back the money and the financiers, which are these companies who discount, uh, who discount these bill of exchange. So, abhi tak, these are the three participants. But from now, this will be the fourth participant, a very important concept from exam point of view. So, insurance companies will be permitted to be a fourth participant on the trades platform. Iske ilawa, all entities who are eligible to undertake the factoring business. Abhi bhi kuch aise entities hai which are ineligible to undertake the factoring business. But all the entities or institutions which are eligible to undertake the factoring business under the Factoring Regulation Act will be permitted to participate as financiers in this Treads platform. Uske ilawa, Treads platform pe secondary market operations bhi allow kari jayengi. So now, secondary market operations will now be enabled on the Treads platform. So for example, if one company holds a bill of exchange, they have discounted this bill of, they hold a bill of exchange, they can trade this with any other company. Okay, so this will be secondary market ki tarah trading ho on this trade platform. This would allow financiers to offload their existing portfolio. So, kuch financiers ke paas already bought sare bill of exchange honge. So, for example, a bank, they had to receive, let's say, 1 lakh from ABC Limited. Now, they, they have these bill of exchange. Now, in need of cash, what will they do? They will sell these bill of exchange to another bank. Okay, so ye ab secondary market ki tarah trading ho jayegi. Ek bank jo hai, wo aur bhi alag tarikhe ki bill of exchange le sakta hai from any other banks or uh, any other platforms that are registered on the trades. Okay, so secondary market operations will now be enabled on the trades platform. This would allow financiers to offload their existing portfolio to other financiers within the same trades platform. They can offload their existing portfolio to other financiers. Factoring kya hota hai, ye process yaha pe explained hai. I have already explained you what is the entire process of factoring. It is a financial transaction and a type of debt or finance in which a business sells its accounts receivable to a third party at a discount. Why? In need of immediate cash. Okay? Uske ilawa, currency management function of RBI ke under bhi koi cheez hai. What is this? QR based coin vending machine. Another important concept. So this is a pilot launch. Iska framework going forward aega. And pilot testing hogi 12 cities mein. Going forward is 12 cities ka jo bhi result hoga. Uske basis pe aur bhi zada cities mein ye introduce kara jayega. Now what is this? QR based coin vending machine. So there is a vending machine for coins which earlier used to take place in a traditional basis wherein you had to give your cash and you could collect coins. So, why is this? To improve the distribution of coins in the economy. So, to improve distribution, a pilot project, which is this QR code coin vending machine, we call it QCVM. In collaboration with few banks, this will be introduced. Now, what will happen? A cashless mechanism ke through you can get coins. So, in that, there will be a QR code and using your mobile phones, just like in UPI transactions, you use QR code, ko use karte hai, an amount will be deducted from your bank account directly and you can get coins from these vending machines. So the QCVM is a cashless coin dispensation machine, which would dispense coins against debit to the customer's bank account using UPI. Okay, so you will scan QR code ko scan karenge using your mobile phone. There will be a deduction in your account and you will get Coins, which traditionally cash mein hota tha. Okay, the QCVM would eliminate the need of physical tendering of banknotes and their authentication. Customers will also have the option to withdraw coins 
इन रिक्वायर्ड क्वांटिटी तो अब आपको जिस क्वांटिटी के कॉइन्स uh, चाहिए वो भी आप कर सकते हैं ओके टेन ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज का कितने कॉइन चाहिए क्वांटिटी एंड डिनोमिनेशन एज वेल दिस इज ऑन द कस्टमर ओके दे हैव द ऑप्शन टू विदड्रॉ एनी क्वांटिटी और डिनोमिनेशन दे वॉन्ट सो द पायलट प्रोजेक्ट विल बी इन नाइनटीन लोकेशन इन ट्वेल्व सिटीज विच विल बी फर्दर एक्सटेंडेड इफ द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस इज पॉजिटिव इट टू बी इन so this machine this vending machine will be installed in public places for example railway station shopping malls market places why to enhance ease and accessibility of coins there are still people who want to uh, use coins for them uh, to have easy access for coins of coins these will be deployed in public places based on the learning from pilot test guidelines will be issued to banks to promote better distribution okay so this was all from our side regarding this monetary policy statement and statement of developmental and regulatory policies let's uh, this is our app if you haven't yet downloaded you can sari information about all the exams you will get on this platform on this app let's look at the first question today very easy monetary policy statement mein repo the policy repo rate mein 25% ka increase aaya hai after this what will be the policy repo rate which of the following is the current policy repo rate for india the current answer is 6.5% okay so if the repo rate is increased by 25 basis point then the standing deposit facility rate will dash by dash pp from the repo rate this you have to answer in the comment section i have already explained this aur ye pehle bhi bahut baar explain kiya ja chuka hai in the monetary policy statement of feb what is projected gdp growth for fy23 this is 7% as per FAE first advance estimate you can add this in question as per first advance estimate okay in the monetary policy statement this should be january feb 23 in the monetary policy statement feb 23 what is the stance that is decided by the mpc this change will be done in the final P uh, pdf the answer is calibrated withdrawal stance was followed dash is a financial transaction and the type of debtor finance in which a business sells its account receivable to a third party at a discount generally in need of immediate cash you will tell the answer to this bahut easy hai abhi bataya hai do not get confused with featuring or higher purchase this is very easy you have to answer this answers are already provided that's it from today i hope you like the session thank you